The 831 incident in Prince Edward Station continues to haunt many Hong Kong people. Over the past year, the last day of every month draws people to the station to commemorate the incident. On 31st of July, people came to the station to lay flowers despite a typhoon. Citing violations of the public gathering ban, the police cleared the crowd for blocking passageways. The 831 incident has left lasting damage on those arrested and injured that night. A year has passed. How have they overcome the pain while searching for truth and justice? In the evening of 831 last year, Simon was traveling on the Kwantong MTR line. When he reached Prince Edward Station, a clash broke out between protesters and passengers, halting the train service as a siren blared. Amid the chaos, he boarded a train for Central across the platform, only to be beaten and injured by the police. Okay, Simon was a 17-year-old at the time of the incident. He was clubbed three times on the back of his head. Cowering on the train carriage floor, he received first aid. He was later transferred to hospital from Yamate Station. It's only after Simon reached Kwangwa Hospital that the police arrested him for illegal assembly. He ended up hospitalized for nine days and received 14 stitches to his head injury. The police watchdog's report on the 831 incident quoted the police as saying they were able to identify violent protesters who disguised as passengers based on their observations and professional judgment. The police said they used the minimum force to restrain and arrest violent protesters who attacked officers. For Simon, the report findings were biased and they failed to get to the truth about the incident. Even since the 831 incident, Simon withheld his real name in interviews with Hong Kong Connection and other media for fear of repercussions if he spoke about his experience publicly. A year on, he changed his mind. He decided to come forward to speak out against police brutality.
，到底上香港變成一個點樣嘅地方？我哋想香港變成一個自由民主、大家暢所欲言嘅地方啦，定係一個充滿紅線，我哋互相要猜忌嘅，我哋係連我哋心裏面覺得係啱嘅都唔講得嘅地方咯。去到呢個時候，我哋見到有速龍一咁樣跑緊喺另一邊，即係頭先講速龍嘅另一邊，咁我哋就即刻跑啦。第三個至第四個嗰個廣告牌嗰個位置，我當時喺嗰度。Sonia is another individual who the police arrested for illegal assembly in the A31 incident. She suffered an asthma attack after she was arrested on the escalator. She was one of the seven seriously injured that got sent to hospital that night. 咁消防員當時係有俾黑色嘅氧氣筒同埋氧氣罩俾我行嘅。In a bid to document the truth, she returned to Prince Edward Station a week after the incident to reconstruct the sequence of events from her arrest through to her transfer to hospital. After filming this reconstruction of the incident, Sonia realized she'd been scarred by what happened to the extent she's afraid to step inside Prince Edward Station. 搭列車經過太子站，我已經頂唔順咯，即係 panic attack 到我成個人係震曬，我係控制唔到，不由自主咁震啦，成個人見到企唔直咯。即係我最驚嘅其實係 PA 嘅聲啦，即係嗰個嘟嘟嘟嗰個，驚回憶起當日真係有個速龍喺我面前用棍減山咁波拍一個人個頭啦，即係好多。不安啊，好多嗰一刻嘅唔想回憶起嘅嗰啲片段都湧現翻上心頭咯。For over a year, there have been different theories about whether anyone died in the A31 incident. Rumors spread online that the police beat people to death inside Prince Edward Station. Even though the police repeatedly clarified that no one died inside the station that night, members of the public continued to come to Prince Edward on the last day of every month to lay flower offerings to mark the 831 incident. Sonia returned to the scene two months later. She hoped that the truth about what happened could be revealed one day. Tg应该是吗？哦，好贵啊！真系，唉。呢个系紫云药、诶止痛药、脑神经药同埋维生素，呢啲算少噶啦，其实都已经，即系。Simon received a head injury in the A31 incident. He's had to deal with the after effects of concussion, finding relief for his regular headaches and dizziness by taking medication and doing exercise. When I was DSC, I had to go to Wunshu. I felt that my body was lost. My body was lost. And I was really lost. So I was really lost. I remember the first time I was 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 lost. So I went to the hospital two times. Two times. Two times. 
Simon said goodbye to his life as a secondary school student when he turned 18 in May this year. Sonia is a student at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. She's one of the arrested persons in the A31 incident. Over the past year, the tumultuous ride of the anti-extradition bill movement and her experience of arrest have given Sonia a whole new perspective on life. After her arrest, Sonia publicly accused a male officer of hitting her breast in Kwai Chung Police Station. She also said female officers watched her while she was in the toilet. She then revealed her identity and her full name. Sonia's allegations sparked a public outcry. The complaints against police office said it would launch an investigation. It tried to contact Sonia but was not successful in taking her statement. Hong Kong Connection contacted the police to inquire the progress of their investigation into Sonia's allegations. The police said they do not comment on individual cases. They stress that Capo would handle complaints fairly and impartially in accordance with established procedures. Simon was injured in the 831 incident. At the end of last year, with the assistance of volunteer lawyers, he lodged a civil lawsuit to claim damages from the police. 看到是三條血淋淋的紅色的傷口那樣跟住那時候我覺得哇這麼恐怖的 In order to clarify the course of events and the identity of the assailants in the A31 incident, they applied for a court order requiring the MTR Corporation and the police to disclose CCTV footage and related documents. Uh 
警察去公開閉路電視片段啦、警方文件啦，同埋一啲相關嘅資料嘅。前幾日都瞓唔著，係啦，可能係因為擔心得太多，其實都開始會擔心，其實如果我繼續行出嚟去做呢個咁樣嘅民事訴訟嘅話，會出現嘅一啲對我嘅報復咧，或者係一啲嘅後果咧咁樣。After hearing the case from both sides, the court had still to make a decision on Simon's application. There's nothing he could do but wait. 攞警員資料同埋 CCTV 只係一個好早嘅一步嚟嘅。我本身期望都唔會太大，係啦，反而係我希望可以喺將來嘅漫長嘅日子之中，可以一步一步咁樣為香港人揾翻當日喺八三一消失嘅真相。Hong Kong Connection reached out to the police to ask if they are investigating allegations of improper use of force during the incident and if any officers involved have been punished. The police responded that they would not comment on cases that had entered judicial proceedings. They also reiterated that had it not been for the violent attacks and sabotage by rioters, there would have been no need for the police to use any force. After Sonia publicly accused the police of sexual violence, she started receiving a host of harassment calls and threatening messages. There was also a barrage of criticism against her online. Sexual性病这个指控和性的指控也严重 Sonia says she has been under tremendous pressure ever since the 831 incident. Her decision to speak out publicly has exposed her to cyberbullying. At the same time, she has to cope with the stress of her university studies and the strains of life. As a result, her depression has got worse, and she was even hospitalized once after a drug overdose. Come 我現在的名字是性暴力受害人<笑> The DSE results day in July marked the end of Simon's status as a secondary school student. It also marked the beginning of a new phase in his life. 
Last summer, Simon was actively involved in the social movement. He experienced injuries and arrest in the A31 incident. This summer, he took up a part-time job working hard amid the pandemic to ease the burden on his family and to prepare for the start of the school year at Chinese University in September. On the eve of the one-year anniversary of the A31 incident, the police notified some of those arrested, including Simon, that they could collect items that were taken away from them as case exhibits. Sonia also reclaimed her possessions. In their reply to our inquiry, the police were not willing to disclose the number of persons that had been told to reclaim possessions. They also emphasized that the recovery of exhibits does not equal the end of investigations. They said if there is sufficient evidence, the police will bring the lawbreakers to justice.